Good evening. Welcome to worship. Uh, tonight we're going to hear about, that sounds strange, but God's Word. Um, but we're going to hear how God's Word is, is, is all powerful, that it does exactly what it says it's going to do. Uh, but that doesn't mean people aren't going to resist it and ignore it. Um, but, and then it can be kind of frustrating for us sometimes, but uh, God still promises he's going to prevail and that his word is going to do exactly uh, what he says it's going to do. Uh, no real new announcements, but once again, just check out your insert to see everything that is going on in the next uh, weeks and months. And with that, we begin our worship this evening with our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered around him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I get older and I become an adult, I look back and I realize how truly blessed I was as a child and, and taking for granted the things that I had. And I don't mean like material possessions, but I mean that I had parents who told my sisters and me exactly what we needed to hear. We were told all the time how much we were loved. We were told how much we, we were cared for and how much they worried about us and, and how they would do anything for us. Um, in actions, in deeds, we, we were loved and cared for, always making sure we were fed, clothed, uh, the, the importance of education, j- just teaching us and demonstrating us how, how we should live and, and how they would do everything in their power to keep us safe. And I know as a kid I took those things for granted because as you get older you realize, wow, not every kid had that growing up. And, and you begin to realize how truly blessed you were to, to hear those words and, and to have those actions given to you. Well, isn't it ironic then? Maybe I, irony is not the best word, but those same people who loved me and said they would do anything for me would say things to me like, you're not allowed to leave the house for two weeks. Or, oh, just wait until we get home. I mean, it's such a contradiction, right? They said they loved me and cared for me and all these things, and then how could they be so mean to do things like that for, to me? I mean, you know, not me, my sisters, I was perfect, but, um, you know, things like that. Hey, clearly... You know, especially for those of you who are parents. You're not, you're not being mean. My parents weren't being mean. Any punishment I received, I no doubtedly deserved and probably actually deserved a, a, a lot more. But right when you're younger, it seems so unfair and it seems like such a contradiction. If you really loved me, if you really cared for me, you know, why won't you let me be happy? Let me do the things that would make me happy. It seems so opposite of will always love me. But nevertheless, those words were powerful. And as you get older, you realize, wow, even though I was the one or my sisters who who did things that weren't right, it never stopped the love. It never stopped all the other things they they did for us. There was no contradiction, even though if it felt that way. And it almost seems like this evening, in a couple of our readings, we almost have a, a contradiction of sorts through Jesus and the word of God through the prophet Isaiah. We heard how God's word is all-powerful, that it's going to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Yet at the same time, Jesus is talking about how it can be rejected and, and, and resisted, and Satan is going to work his best to try to get into our hearts and rip it away from us, and sometimes we just let him do it. So first, God uses this imagery from Isaiah. And hear it again. He said, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven... And do not return there, but water the earth, so shall my word be. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. Okay, it it sounds nice. But but then we jump ahead to the gospel, and Jesus once again uses this this theme of nature and agriculture, and he says something a little different, or, or so it seems. The sower goes out to sow, And some of the seeds are snatched away, and some are scorched, and some are choked. And only a portion of the seed produces grain. And and we have this paradox of faith. But it's an important paradox for us to meditate on, because it helps us to make sense to see the tension that we see. The tension in the ministry of Jesus, what what Jesus desires, what, what Jesus says, and the lives of the people he was speaking to, and yes, even our lives today. Because by this point in the ministry of Jesus, as most of us know, there's already been plenty of opposition to his teaching, to his miracles, by, well, just about everybody. By religious leaders. By earthly leaders. Jesus has warned the disciples, as we heard a few weeks back, that there's going to be opposition. This word that you go out to speak, and even the disciples, if you remember, they came back excited. Jesus, your word, it has authority. And yet Jesus says, it's going to be opposed, and you're going to be put to death for that word. 
Yet in the midst of, of demonic forces, of earthly governments, of religious institutions who reject the word of God, Jesus continues on through his ministry, and Jesus continues to speak his word. And what we have to remember is that the rejection of the word of God, it's not merely an intellectual or an academic rejection, but it's a spiritual one. Because I'm guessing for most of us here today, we've become frustrated at some point, especially when it's people in our own lives that we love, especially when it's people that, that we love that maybe we grew up with in the church or used to be in the church, and we begin to think, how? How can they reject it? How can they walk away from all of this? They've heard the exact same thing that I heard. They've heard that powerful word and the promises that, it's, that are attached to it. And I get it. I get it. We've all been there. And, and remember, we can't be too shocked when people are going to reject the word of God. First of all, Jesus said it was going to happen. He said it was going to happen a number of times, and Paul writes about this, and we see it other places throughout the scriptures. But also remember this. There were people who had a first row seat to everything that Jesus was doing, to the miracles to the teaching, to the words that he spoke that entered their ears, and they rejected him. And they were the ones who betrayed him and hung him on a cross. So how are the disciples to respond then? When the disciples hear these, these words, this parable of the sower, how are they to respond? Well, Jesus offers an encouraging word. That even in the midst of opposition, even in the midst of everything that may happen, in the midst of flat-out rejection, God's word can and it will bear fruit. That it's going to do the job. That it's going to do exactly what it says it's going to do. And here's the lesson for us and, and what the disciples needed to remember and what you and I need to remember. It may not always be in our time, though. And it may not always be in our way. And it may not be the exact way that we would have done things. Because Jesus flat out says, it's going to go everywhere. Maybe not the places that we think it would go. Maybe not the ways that we think it will go. And it's going to work. It's going to work and it's going to do exactly what it says it's going to do. That is so important for us as Christians to remember today. Because I see the same things that you see, and I've experienced many of the same things you've experienced in, in, in your lives, and for some of you longer, and you, and you begin to witness that maybe Christianity, it's not maybe, we know, Christianity in our culture, it doesn't have the same standing that it used to be. It's not even close. And maybe, yes, some people will remember that the, some of the good things the church has done throughout the years, but others attack Christianity and because it's evil or it's perceived to be evil. And, and quite frankly, yes, Christians have done things sometimes in the name of Christianity that have been evil. And that can be frustrating for us because it's not what we think it should be. It's not the way we think life should be or the world should be. And we become frustrated and we cry out and we begin to wonder, how much longer can we go on? How much longer can, can the world survive? How much longer can we survive? How much longer can the church survive when it seems like people are just doing whatever it is that they want to do and that the consequences don't matter at all? That nobody's listening to this word. Even those people who were baptized and brought up in the church, those people who received the Lord's sacrament, They've completely walked away. Well, Jesus offers us this, believe it or not, encouraging parable today that he acknowledges our reality, that God's word, it can and it will be resisted. So that means it's not about us. It's not that we don't have the right techniques. It's not that we don't have the right public relations or the right people to go out there and, and really lay out what exactly it is that we're doing. It's not that we don't have gifted missionaries who aren't doing the work, whether it's at home or abroad. No, it's the fact that it's going to be resisted, 
but we still have an all-powerful word, an all-powerful word that still promises to do amazing things. You've already heard it this evening. You've heard the word of God from the scriptures. You've heard the word of God from my mouth. And it wasn't me doing it. It was me being called by God to say, your sins are forgiven. God forgives each and every one of your sins. That even if you don't feel like you're forgiven, even if you're clinging to something and it just feels like there's nobody who's going to love you or care for you, those sins are still forgiven. God still is working. God's still working in the church and in the world. And you know what? For all the doom and gloom and for all the ways it seems like, oh, maybe, may, maybe the world is going against the church and, and maybe Christianity doesn't have its right place anymore, I actually believe, I, I really do, that there is maybe no greater time to be a Christian than right now than right now in the times in which we live. Because it means for us as Christians, we're actually going to be forced to trust in the Word of God. We're actually going to be forced to trust God, to trust that He's actually in control, that He's actually going to do the things that He says that He's going to do, that He's actually done the things that He's already done for us. That maybe there's a time we thought, well, I can trust, trust in the institutions of this world or, or anything else. The institutions of this world are constantly changing. That's not just a now thing. That's been an always thing. That was even happening in the days of Jesus and before the days of Jesus. But right now as Christians, we actually get to merely trust in the one thing that doesn't change that word of God that promises to do exactly what it says, that it's unmovable, that it's the word that gives us life, true life, and the promise of eternal life. It's the same word that raised Jesus from the dead. We can't control the resistance of of people resisting God's word, but we can trust in the word of God. We can trust that it's going to continue to do what it says. This parable is not about asking, well, what type of soil that I am, or or am I growing some way? But this parable actually calls us to look at the scorched earth and to realize, I may not be able to, and quite frankly, I probably can't trust the things of this world always, but I can always, always trust what God promises to me in his world. Then no matter how much suffering and hurt and resistance we see in the world or in our own lives, in in our own families, We have a God who continues to walk among us. We have a God who continues to serve us. We have a God who still desires that we know him, that we hear that word, and that we take it to heart, and that we actually trust it no matter what it is that we encounter. So my prayer for for all of us is that God continues to work. God continues to work not just through each and every one of us, but that we don't give up on the world either, that God continues to work in a world that where it looks like everything's been abandoned, he still scatters, he still sows, and he still shows the amazing things that he can do. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. I would invite you to please stand now as we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus 
and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you send forth your word as abundantly as rains upon the earth. Grant that we would never take your generosity for granted, but would seek the help and refreshment of your word in every circumstance. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, continue to sow your word through the fields of the earth. Bless pastors and missionaries as they proclaim your truth. Prepare the hearts of all who hear to believe and yield abundant fruit. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, bless parents with faithfulness as they plant your word into their children, that they may grow steadfast among the cares and troubles of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Creator of heaven and earth, by your word you send forth rain and snow to make the world bring forth and sprout. Give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Provide us seasonable weather and a bountiful harvest, that we may enjoy daily bread and praise your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, look with mercy upon those who suffer from illness of body or mind. Be especially with Marvine, Ron, Steve, William, Janice, Richard, and all those who we name in our hearts. Give them healing. Comfort them with your presence. Grant them patience and endurance suffering, and assure them at all times that they are your dear children and that the glory of Christ awaits them. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, your spirit calls us by the gospel to the new life of faith. We praise you and acknowledge you as our Lord. Deliver us from the devil's temptations that we may live under you and serve you in righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. Mm -hmm.